fifth trumpet of Revelation, army to kill a third of humanity. Revelation 9 verses 13 to 15, And the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to kill a third part of mankind. In the previous fifth trumpet, the demonic locusts are only commanded to torment humanity without killing them. But in the sixth trumpet, one-third of humanity is killed. It's a 200 million army of horsemen. Revelation 9 verse 16, And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200 million, and I heard the number of them. The army is defined. Revelation 9 verse 17, And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. The question is, is this army natural or supernatural? It may or may be not. If this describes a natural army of men, then the weird description may speak of modern, mechanized warfare. It may be John simply describing modern weaponry in the only terms he can, and the result is this weird, grotesque, terrifying account. With the four horses of Apocalypse, one quarter of the earth is killed, Revelation 6 verse 8. With the sixth trumpet, a one-third of humanity is killed. Total equals one quarter plus one slash three equals seven twelfths. Therefore the remaining population of humanity on earth by the end of the sixth seal will be May 12th. If this will be in 2020, estimated world population is 7.6 billion. The remaining population will be 5 twelfths times 7.6 is equal to 3.2 billion. And if it will be on 2030, estimated world population is 8.2 billion. The remaining population will be 5 twelfths times 8.2 is equal to 3.4 billion. But even after humanity seen God's wrath up to the sixth trumpet, they remaining humanity repenting not. These demons are in the region where Vespasian's armies come from, Euphrates. The word Euphrates is also significant for the first century Jewish readers. It conjures up numerous Old Testament passages where the enemies of Israel came from, from the north, from the Euphrates, Jeremiah 6 verse 1 and 22, 10 verse 22, 13 verse 20, Ezekiel 26 verse 7, 38 verse 6. And this has made some commentators say that this passage must then be referring to a hundred million human soldiers. Or if you hold to the minority text, 200 million human soldiers. It is humans, after all, who came from the north in the Old Testament. But as we will see, everything about these mounted enemies demonstrates that they are demons, not simply men. But it is not exclusive of human armies. The demons are somehow connected to those human armies. But the focus is on demons. So, just as verses 1 to 12 show the images in Titus' armies that pointed to the demons they worshipped, these were images on Vespasian's legions that pointed to the demons that they worshipped. These demons were used to kill a third of mankind, verse 15. Let me give you one more point, and that is seen in verse 15. So the four angels were released, they had been prepared for the hour and the day and month and year. And here comes the phrase we haven't dealt with yet, so that they might kill a third of mankind. 
Let me first of all discard some lame arguments that have been used by our own camp. Mulholland suggests that all of humanity is divided up into three groups of unequal size, a group sealed by God, a group judged by God, and a group who is neither sealed nor judged but is given opportunity to repent. So one-third of those groups are killed on his interpretation. But that seems forced. It seems to refer to one-third of mankind, not one of three very unequal groups. So I am not satisfied with that explanation. But there are four arguments as to why this is most probably related to the world of the Roman Empire. First, in the parallel section in chapter 16 verse 14 the demons from the Euphrates go out of the beast's mouth, so that connects it to Nero, to Rome. We are not talking about China or North America. Second, he speaks of the kings at the Euphrates, so that is the second connection that would seem to indicate that it is Gentiles, and goes beyond Jews. But the Euphrates is still within the Roman Empire, so it excludes China. Third, it speaks of them coming to the land of Israel to wage war at Megiddo. Rome came to Megiddo, but China didn't. And our passage also speaks of the demons coming from the Euphrates, the place where the auxiliary units combined with Vespasians for legions that were brought to Israel. And the point is that these demons would be unleashed not just upon Israel, which is where many partial preterists restrict this demonic activity, but also upon the whole empire during the next three and a half years. This is a covenantal judgment against both Israel and Rome. The scripture says in Revelation 9 verse 14, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. These angels are bound. Why would God have to bind angels that are loyal to him and willing to do his bidding? He wouldn't. Fallen angels are another story, they are in rebellion against God. These four angels who are bound at the river Euphrates are evil fallen angels. We know that when Satan fell from heaven he took with him one-third of the angelic realm with him. In no other passage in all of God's word do we find one of God's angels being bound. It is fairly obvious that these angels are demons or fallen angels. We cannot trust civil governments to do what they have promised to do, especially if they are led by unbelievers. The book of Revelation makes it unmistakably clear that civil leaders can easily be moved by demons. Even if they want to fulfill their promises, they are limited in what they can do. The sixth trumpet judgment is severe. It is a fact that this world is headed toward the judgment of God. The tribulation period is God giving every conceivable chance to a sin-hardened world to come to Him and repent. The fifth trumpet judgment has sounded and a plague of demonic locusts have been let loose on the earth. Men and women have wished that they could die. Yet we know that for those who are living during the tribulation period, more difficult moments will come. We are going to pick up the narrative in Revelation 9 verse 12, the first woe is past, two other woes are yet to come. I want you to remember that these woes are a warning that the judgment that follows is something that is severe. Escape the great tribulation today. Accept the price Jesus Christ paid for you on the cross. Repent, repent, repent. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Thanks for watching our channel Sermon TV. Like, share, and subscribe. Comment your opinion.